Yeah, I'll try to do it again.
Welcome, family and friends, and let me be the first to say congratulations to the class of 2021. We are delighted to have everyone here tonight. We could not have asked for a better evening, and we welcome you all. This has been quite a year full of joy, heartache, anxiety, and hope. But in the end, you made it, and we are very proud of you. I want to thank our students, I want to thank our parents, our teachers, our nurses and health staff, our counselors, our class advisor, Melissa Strelke, our custodians, our office staff, our superintendent, and our school committee. Everyone did a marvelous job of pulling together, of working through this challenging year, and getting us to where we are this evening. Thank you. I can barely hear you back here. And we are excited to have everyone here in person. This is a wonderful time. High school was great, but now it's on to bigger and better things. Make the most of it. Enjoy your life. You deserve it. Be good to yourself. You deserve it. Be kind to yourself. You deserve it. You will always have a home here. Don't be afraid to come back, but get out there and live a great life. Keep us in your thoughts, but it's time for a new chapter, and that's very exciting. Keep growing, keep moving, keep living. Find happiness where and when you can. Our best to you, and congratulations. I would like to ask us now to join together in a moment of silence for those of us, for those who couldn't be with us this evening, uh, including um, Cole Baranowski, who is one of our one of our students. Thank you. And a quick reminder. Once we begin awarding the diplomas, we will be going alphabetically. Families, when your um, student is receiving their diploma, after they come and cross over to this side of the stage, please come up and take a picture here, which would be wonderful. I would now like to invite Ethan Russell up to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. And thank you so much for coming. I know that it's been a really difficult year and there have been a lot of anxieties around gatherings such as this, but as a member of the graduating class of 2021, I can say that it's really, um, it's really heartening to see everyone here together uh, safely um, once again after the past few years we've had. Um, <laughs> over the course of the past six years at Frontier, I've had the privilege to talk, write, and learn with some truly amazing artists. Whether a painting, a play, or an orchestral piece, or something new entirely, the Frontier community has always encouraged its students to be creative and find more ways to make our world a beautiful place. Now more than ever, we can all use a little more beauty and art in our lives. So the class of 2021 has decided that this year, our graduation ceremony will include an original poem by our very own Malia Haynes. Malia is a three-time winner of the Frontier High School Poetry Slam, where she captivated students and judges alike with her remarkable passion and eloquence. Outside the auditorium, Malia is a kind and compassionate friend, as well as an excellent student. She has participated in the Frontier Cross Country Team, the National Honor Society, and has sat on the board of class officers for the class of 2021. It is my great honor to introduce my friend, Malia Haynes, reading her original commencement poem.
Thank you, Zoe, for that introduction. I love you. Um, beautiful as always. Okay. So this is the this is the poem that I wrote for graduation. Today we stand before you. A wind pushed us down this road. The forest path has fractured, revealing several new tracks. And while these tracks are unfamiliar, one must be traveled. Today we stand before you as a product of our resilience. For years our hearts have grown weary. The forest is an awfully dense place and yet we smile. Because even though we are not pristine, not yet polished to perfection in this moment, we are complete. We've taken the opportunity to travel through the forest, making several stops along the way. Guided only by our intuition and hope, we have eventually come upon this place, this new fork in the road. And while these paths may be filled with mist, with fog chasing the edges, all we can do is stand before you and smile. We are products of our environment, the one that told us to try even as we tired, the one that told us to grow even as we grieved, the one that told us that even if frustration took over our hearts and minds, our bodies and souls to always believe in the power of our words. And so today I remind you as we all stand before you that together we have traveled down this path. The heavy rain that comes with any journey pounded down on our backs and yet we smiled. We are a class waiting to show the world our next big moves. You can see it on our faces. The words great things are coming are etched into our bones. You can hear it in our walking, triumphant footsteps pounding the ground. We were never known for standing on the sidelines. Today we depart on our separate paths where we will untie ourselves from one another and set forth on an unclear road. Watch us walk toward our unfolding future, one where we determine and define the rules. And we will do so with the utmost grace and kindness because we are pioneers ready to take on the next big challenge, because we are the ones who carry the passion necessary to create a brighter future. Because we, as we stand before you, are the class of 2021. Thank you. I would now like to invite up Isabel Brown for the introduction of our class president. This is the fifth Frontier graduation I have had the pleasure of attending, but this is the first where I've had a glimpse into all the effort and work that goes into the event. It is a testament to the hard work and dedication of our class officers. They have a difficult job and one that we trust to students who are dedicated, hardworking, and collaborative. Nobody exemplifies these traits more than Sophia Rossi. Her attention to detail can be seen in everything from today's ceremony to the fabulous way she dresses. Sophia has always been a helpful peer, dedicated student, and gracious classmate. I am incredibly honored to present to you our class president, Sophia Rossi. Thanks, Abby. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers, wait, no, 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 that's not right. How about, I have a dream that my four little children will one day, no, no, that's not right either. Ich bin Ike Berliner? That's not even English. The truth is, no words but our own can describe the senior year that we have all experienced. No famous speeches given by past presidents Nothing we learned in, learned in high school, no lesson on rhetoric ever studied, sorry, Ms. Strelke, <laughs> could ever prepare us for what we had, would have in store for the years of 2020 and 2021. We are seniors in high school. We are not scientists, not politicians, not experts in any field, not prophets, fortune tellers, or oracles. 
We had no idea what we would face going into our last year here at Frontier. It was confusing, annoying, frustrating, and frankly, terrifying. But we did it. We made it. No, really, I'm impressed. We actually made it through high school. I know there are some of you who threatened dropping out a little too often. I was worried. <laughs> but we're here today, right now. You can all relish in the fact that you did it. Go ahead. Be proud. It feels good. Okay? Okay. Now, through this moment of happiness and of pride, I want you to reach deep inside yourself and feel something specific. I want you to feel anxiety. This might be very difficult for you, or, more likely, you're all very accustomed to this. Here's some inspiration for you. Choose any that apply. You're going to college next year. You're moving out of your parents' house. You're moving away from everything and everyone you've known through your whole life. You're moving to a different country. You're going to have to write more essays. You're going to have to take more standardized tests. You're never going to be the same person ever again. We may all never be together again. You're going to have to make new friends. I could go on, but I think we're all feeling terrified enough. So I'll stop here. Whether or not anything on this list applies to you, you know that fear you hold deep inside of you. You know how you try to hide it. And you know that sometimes it feels like it'll eat you up. Sometimes it feels like it could chew you up and spit you out and you'd just be a little speck of mass somehow still existing in this world. But that feeling, that deep dread of the future, the fear of change, of something new, you all just got a hell of a lot of practice overcoming it. We all just survived a pandemic. When I tell you that's as tough as it gets, I mean it. You all know the ramifications COVID inflicted. You all know exactly what you have had to do to deal with it. Remember when it was a two week vacation? Then easy school until fall. And then fall came and you started missing your sports, your dances, your friends, the cool way seniors swing lanyards around that just made them seem so much older. Your birthday parties, your vacations, leaving during lunch, your trips to Europe. Everything you had hoped for. Everything that we were supposed to have had was ripped away with no signs of coming back. Every single expectation was torn down and then months later miraculously given back for like two weeks but still we dealt with that we might not have been very happy about it but we did it let's face it our senior year was different and we missed most of it we accidentally slept through online classes barely had to show our faces, never walked through the hallways yelling at freshmen to move to the side because we're the superior class, obviously, and never really had the time to relish in our senior glory at all because we missed most of it. But right there at the end, we did a whole lot to make up for it. We managed to actually organize ourselves, like with risky business, a prank, a tailgate, among other things. We proved that we had gained something from this year of skipping school we learned to take changes as they come and to embrace what little time we had to act like real seniors. We felt fear every day. We felt anxious every day. We suffered through constant change. We know change. We have the skills to overcome the new, to break into our futures with guns blazing and not a single joke to miss. So all that anxiety you feel now, your greatest change yet, you can let it go. You can let it go. You are strong enough to embrace the new. You just did. And that's all. Good job. Sure. I want to welcome Abby Roberts to the stage. She's the best. She has the best laugh. She's the funniest person I've ever met. Most contagious laughter, I swear. I love this girl. Hello, everyone. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Thank you, Sophia. Love you very much. I am standing in front of you as the president of National Honor Society. Sounds a bit like a daunting title, doesn't it? Since I was elected president back in the fall, I've been muddling through speech ideas as I knew what lay ahead of me come graduation, floating the ideas of the 
We did it speech, or the we've been through a lot this past year that Sophia just gave. Although, I don't think years after this one we'll be able to use that one much. I wanted to talk about something important, something personal, and I was finally able to think of one. And I'm not going to lie to you, it was on Tuesday, with thanks from my parents, thank you mom and dad, and from my English project. I asked Frontier staff members to give advice for the senior class as we are beginning a new chapter in our books, and I shared it with the entire grade. Now, I want to give you my own advice. I am standing in front of you as president of National Honor Society. It took a lot to get here. According to the NHS, it took service, character, scholarship, and citizenship. But those are basically four broad terms that boil down to having good grades and being a good person. However, I disagree with this. Because the real reason I'm standing here is because of the 100 graduates in front of me. The grades I have are a direct impact of my classmates challenging me and helping me in and out of the classroom. In all of the smiles, door holdings, high fives in the hallway, the cheers in the gym during sporting events or when gym class went a little too hard on nitro ball, catching someone's eye during remote learning, tent assembling, and kind words that have been shared over the years have had a direct influence on who I am. These commonalities are our collective successes. We have been able to share these experiences and grow our relationships with each other over the past six years. All of our, su all of our successes, collective or independent, are not each other's failures, but a result of everything that you have given them. Your friends' successes are because you are in their life. The idea of recognizing your own influence in someone else's life is the foundation to a healthy relationship. There is no way to stress the importance of having a healthy relationship. Nothing is more valuable than having a healthy relationship. This includes relationships with your friends, who you choose to be your family, or even with food. But the most important relationship is the one you have with yourself. So this is my big advice. Put healthy relationships as your top priority. Always. These will give you the foundation to thrive, the support systems you can reliably fall back on, and the strength to get you through your toughest battles. No grade, sport, job, or even career path could ever trump the importance of being able to look around and see people who love you, and you love them. I'm fortunate enough to have formed these, and I'm now able to stare before, stand before you and share the most valuable lesson I've learned over the years. Healthy relationships are the foundation to success. As we go forward into our separate directions, my wish for us all is that we carry this lesson and that these relationships stay with us so that we have the support and love that we need to prosper. Congratulations, class of 2021. We did it, and we've been through a lot. Stay hungry, stay foolish, and choose kindness. Thank you. I would now like to invite up to the podium Skylar Denny, who will be introducing our commencement speaker. Hi. For six years now, the Frontier Regional Class of 2021 has been graced with many remarkable teachers helping us learn lessons that we will carry with us for the rest of our lives. One of the first teachers many of us came to know and love is our guest speaker tonight. He is kind and compassionate, always good for a laugh, and one of the most genuine people I have ever met. Some of my fondest memories of him include off-topic discussions, ranging from his hatred of pencils to his impromptu performance in the circus. Beyond the classroom, he has continued to make an impact on many students' lives through his incredible coaching of the cross-country and boys' track and field teams. He always has both his students' and athletes' best interests at heart, and I think it's the, this endearing nature that led our class to selecting him as our speaker tonight. It is with great pleasure that I introduce coach and retired English teacher, Mr. Walter Flynn. I've already added to my speech. Nobody's surprised. Um, Superintendent Modesto, Principal Anides, Assistant Principal Dredge, school committee members, Frontier families, and especially you members of the Frontier class of 2021. Uh, I've been in school almost every week this year. 
on uh, sanity checks, basically. And uh, I guess this is my last one. And uh, I'm feeling that I'm, I feel like I'm at a rebirth. I don't know about you guys, but that's what it feels like tonight. This doesn't feel like business as usual or how business as usual became here, which was something really, really different. Uh, well, when I was invited to speak at this commencement, uh, it was pretty scary and daunting, to be quite frank. I'm used to, I'm used to addressing 12 and 13-year-olds. I mean, you guys are too old for, for me to address now. Um, so I'm going to ask you to, to uh, you know, sort of embrace your 12 and 13, inner 12 and 13 year old. So I am more comfortable. I would appreciate that. Uh, but my first graduation as a teacher was in 1977. <laughs> and I, I remember uh, my colleague, who was about my age now, and he got up in front of the class and, and the, he said, I have one question for you. Why? Why do you want me up here? And now, now I, I guess I understand. Uh, but I thought, you know, what have I to offer? You know, um, I'm surprised they even gave me a microphone. I mean, I've been yelling from one end of this track to the other for over three decades. I don't need a microphone. But I knew one thing going into this. I knew that I was, I was not the kind of speaker who develops one of those proverbial themes and, and peppers you with uh, great quotations. And you, you know that's, that's not my style, so that's not going to be what you get. Um, but I wondered what message could I send you off with? And uh, what wisdom have I gathered over these decades of life that I could impart to you? Maybe even a clever quote or two. Um, but I also worried about my penchant for veering off, you know, onto uh, peripheral educational topics. And I've already started. I'm sorry. But I guess we'll find out about that together. And you were talking about anxiety. Now, this isn't part of my speech. I'm sorry. Um, when I graduated high school in 1970, um, my friend Fred, he was a member of the class. And there were 600 of us, by the way, in one grade. And I want you to know that I would have killed to have been in a school like this. No lie where everybody knew who you were, where everybody took an interest in you and figured out how, you, how to get you to the finish line. Um, but anyway, after we graduated, most of us were heading off to college. Some were heading to factory jobs. Fred, who I thought was one of the coolest kids in the school, was under the bleachers crying because he had no plans, none. And I didn't realize how lucky I was at the time, just going to a state school. But I, I knew I was going somewhere, as scary as that might seem. Fred had no plans. And so I went off to school. Fred went into the Navy. And he became a medical corpsman. And when he got out of the Navy, he entered the medical field, and his last job was at Johns Hopkins as the head of AIDS HIV research. So you can have anxiety, and you can be okay. You can end up okay. This is just the beginning. I guess I should begin by addressing tonight's raison d'etre that being you, our reason for being here. I'm going to share a memory with you. Now, you guys left me after eighth grade, but for the next four years, I'd be wandering around in the senior high. And I would usually stick my head into classrooms, probably most likely English classrooms, and I'd see you in there. 
And it made me so happy to, to see your faces. But what was even more overpowering was the feeling that your teachers were so lucky. And that was followed by feeling really jealous that you were no longer in my classroom. And um, it wasn't because I missed your intelligence or your awesome creativity or your willingness to be academically courageous. Um, I missed your humanity, your presence, whatever you want to call that quality that made being your teacher a gift. So I want to thank you for that. So as I pondered what to share with you, I came to the conclusion that I could not whistle past the graveyard. I could not ignore the elephant in the room, so to speak. I realized that the pandemic had to be addressed in some way. Uh, to ignore it would be to diminish what has been lost, what has been accomplished, and how we arrived at this point. But first, let me take a moment to say this to all the administrators, all the teachers, all the students, the custodians, the cafeteria workers, and frontier families. I just want to say that what you have accomplished over the past year plus has been nothing short of heroic. My colleagues, you've literally been painted into a corner broadcasting your curriculum while delivering it to a live audience as well, constantly masked, not able to prowl about your classroom. June tired by the end of October. Students, their academic lives shrunk into the size of a Chromebook. Many of our lives shrunk into the size of an iPhone screen, our lifeline to family and friends. I never want to Zoom again. It is the singular event of our lives to this point, uh, a time of great loss for many of us in many different ways. It is likely it will stay with us in some way for the rest of our days. Like with my grandparents in the Great Depression and my parents in World War II. We know that this is not the first time in history that humanity has had to endure and rise above such challenges. William Shakespeare, during a time of plague and political upheaval in England, Playhouses Closed, wrote two of his most celebrated plays, King Lear and Macbeth amongst others. Sir Isaac Newton came up with many of his theories on gravity and calculus while basically sheltering in place at his home for two years, away from his academic home, Trinity College in Cambridge. I should mention that King Lear is being performed by Shakespeare and Company this summer, and it will be featuring the actor Christopher Lloyd. So I didn't want to go too far without adding something. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, I lost my place for a second. Um, so we're talking about accomplishments of very, very famous people. And there are books written about them. Many, many, many books. But I'm wondering, what are the accomplishments that we're going to look back on from this time period? and uh, hang our hat on, so to speak, in terms of what they did being heroic. And, you know, I think about science and the development of vaccines in such a rapid and efficient manner that it just stuns the mind to think of how quickly we've been able to make, you know, our uh, culture, our civilization well here to the point where we're sitting without masks on. And what stands out for me about this period of time, and I don't know about you guys, and I've always been a geek when it comes to, to uh, exploration. And um, I was thinking about, you know, for me it's NASA and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory sending the Perseverance rover 293 million miles through space to land on Mars within, a, within like a dozen feet of where they planned. I don't understand that. Um, it's just astonishing. 
And for a moment at that time, when they went through those seven minutes of terror for the Perseverance to land right where it was supposed to and not burn up in the atmosphere or whatever, um, we weren't paying attention to famous actors or musicians or athletes. It was the incredibly brilliant JPL scientists who were the rock stars. Just smart people who love to know things. And if you look closely at them, really closely, they were a beautiful cross-section of every kind of American. It was a wonderful moment. Now, speaking of this, speaking of our pandemic experience, um, I, I suspect we'll never, never be quite the same. Um, we've gone through times where there were there was no toilet paper in the store. And there was no flour in the store. What's wrong with us? Okay, how many of you at home were baking bread for the first time? Raise your hands. Okay, yeah. And then how many of you put it online? I can't tell you how many loaves of bread, loads of sourdough, that I saw on my computer screen. It's just astonishing. How many of you got a dog? Be honest, how many of you? There used to be three dogs in my neighborhood. Now there are 73 dogs in my neighborhood. And they all haven't figured out how to pick up after their dogs. So, I'm, I'm tired of elbow bumping my track team. It's rather ungainly, you know? I really miss f f fist bumping my athletes at the end of each practice. But I, and I'm, I'm suspecting that it's gonna be soon where I'm gonna be able to do that. Maybe even shake a hand, okay? Beca because have you noticed that you miss the simple things that you miss the hug that you miss, even the simple handshake. And, you know, I bet some of you miss the smell of your grandmother's cooking. It's all little things that usually went unnoticed, but somehow they've gained in value during this experience, hasn't it? So I told you I was going to share wisdom such as it is, or maybe it's just observations, or maybe just enough to put in your back pocket, or maybe just for navigational purposes down the road. And it's gonna sound mundane, but I can tell you this because, hey, I'm your teacher, and I get to say this to you for the last time, just to remind you that the stuff I'm gonna talk about, it's, it's out there. It's not just in that building. So I'm going to talk about five things. And first one, just be on time. Now, I hope some of you remember that before we went to Washington, D.C., I told you there are two things you can be. Early or on time. That's it. There are no other choices. If we're late to the cathedral, we're late back to the hotel. If we're late back to the hotel, we're late to the restaurant. If we're late to the restaurant. We're late to the Kennedy Center. Nobody likes to walk into a play when it's already going. Of course, that's happened to me. I've walked in on Cirque du Soleil late because I was dining at a famous actor's restaurant. And so I walked in, and things were going on. And the next thing I knew, and I'll never forget these words as long as I live, a young acrobat says to me, we're going to pick you up now, sir. And that was the start of 
20 Minutes of Terror with the Cirque du Soleil. But it's a hell of a story. Two, you're not going to like this one. Please understand that you don't know everything by a lot. And this includes all of us up here. But we know more than you. Visual, I, I saw this great pie graph. And it's a basic, it's a picture of the known universe, all these galaxies and everything. And like the tiniest of slivers was labeled, what you know, you know. And then a slight, ever so slightly bigger sliver said, what you, or is labeled, what you know, you don't know. Not about 90% was labeled, what you don't know, you don't know. And as I remember back to being 18 years old, and it's not as hard as you think, I can't tell you how much I didn't know. It was massive. Of course, I didn't act like it was. Anyway, the gap between what we know and what we think we know is humongous. It's the Grand Canyon huge. My advice, don't pretend. Own the fact that you don't know stuff. It's easier that way. You're going to be chipping away at that for the rest of your lives. I still am. That's, that's it for that. Okay, three. Now, this is especially a great suggestion for all of you whose lives have been reduced to the size of a shoebox. Because I've been, that's been my life too. That's been all of us. But you're all of a sudden going out there into the world. And uh, there are going to be challenges. And occasionally, occasionally, I'd like you to be able to say no to others when it's in your best interest, even when it won't increase your popularity. And, you know, why do I say that? Because I've seen friends who in college never said no. And then they were packing up to go home for good at the end of the semester. Nice to know you. Just got to know. You just got to know it. it's okay. Um, and I've known others who didn't say no and suffered long-term in other ways that affected their lives. Um, you need to be brave. And mighty forces will come to your aid. I said that for my wife. That was a, a quote from a movie. And... Uh, that's how we communicate. That's our second language. We communicate through movie quotes. So, say no. Four. Simple one here. Tell the people that you love that you love them. It's simple, right? I, my dad was this old factory worker. Took him till he was 70 to figure it out even though I'd said I love you like a billion times to him. Um, but he finally got the knack of it, and for the last handful of years of his life, said it all the time. In fact, it was the last thing my dad ever said to me. And I carry that around in my back pocket every day. Um, and five. five. Five is last. Um... I am a firm believer that the greatest ability is availability. Whether you're talking about school, work, family, friends, whatever, showing up is half the battle. Heck, that's partly why you're here today. You showed up. An awful lot of times here, actually. And I, we, thank you for that. Now, I was supposed to stop there, but 
Something happened two days ago. Robert Neubauer died. Now, none of you know who Robert Neubauer is. Robert Neubauer probably has more to do with me standing here than anybody in the universe. He was one of my high school history teachers. He was my cross country coach. In fact, he tricked me into coming out for cross country because he said it would make me that much more in shape for basketball. Okay, coach. And um, what he was creating at that time was a path. I knew I, was gonna, I wanted to be a teacher, but this path led me here. This is my, this is the best thing I could have done with my life, was be here with you guys. And Robert Neubauer made that possible. And by the time I got out of high school, Coach Neubauer had moved to Seattle. So I figured I'd never see him again. And when I was old enough and smart enough to realize what he'd done for me, he was nowhere around. And then one day, I took my cross-country team down to Connecticut for an invitational, and it turned out that Coach, Coach Neubauer had returned to Connecticut. And that day, I got to tell Coach Neubauer that he changed my life and that I would never forget him. And so when he passed the other day, I had no regrets because I had told him exactly how I felt. I had told him what he had done for me and how he had taught me how to experience joy in the classroom and joy at practice. And uh, so that's for you, Coach. So thank you for allowing me to, to do that. Now, I have three wishes for you, and I didn't have to write these down because they originally came from previous speech. One that I never wrote down, and I made it up as I was going along as father of the ride. My daughter, my daughter graduated. So I guess she kind of graduated. Um, when my daughter got married. And what I remember, and I don't know if any of you parents had this experience, but when I was about, when I was two years into fatherhood, I realized that there was a lot on the line. And I was so worried about how things would go for my kid. And so I just sort of prayed to the powers that be, please get my daughter through high school graduation with a decent head on her shoulder. Please. You know, after that, you know, a lot of it's on you. But I felt really responsible up to that point. And so I want to congratulate the parents right now for getting to this finish line. It's a big deal. So congratulations, parents. And you guys too. Secondly, I wish for you a brilliant constellation of fierce and loyal friends who make your life better every day. Remembering that you too have to be that kind of friend. And finally, I hope you find down the road in your life people who will love you as much as your parents do. So, I'm going to finish up now. Those are my wishes for you. Um, many of you explored poetry in my classroom which I had so much fun with, but I'm not kidding myself. I'm much better at teaching poetry, Malia, than I am at writing it. As a matter of fact, I was in my 50s before I actually wrote a poem I liked. That's sad. But I, re I remember it to this day. And um, it was called Birds on a Wire. And... Um, it, it, was, it was, of course, a metaphor. It was comparing uh, birds that were on a, like a power line and they were grouping up and, and they were preparing to migrate. And I was, comp I was comparing them to students who weren't quite ready. 
So it was birds on a wire. And, and the, um, the last two words that said they weren't ready were the words, but soon. Ladies and gentlemen, soon has arrived. Thank you very much. Now we are going to begin the awarding of our diplomas. Are you guys ready? Okay. Thomas Robert Alber. Ruth Lydia Artiga de Paz. Cole Jameson Baranowski. Allison Ann Barnes. Kyle Scott. Barnes. Hallie Maureen Belcher. Catherine Grace Pizzaio. <laughs> Cassidy Lynn Piskursky. Rowan J. Blair. Spencer Lawrence Braverman. Rebecca, oh, my bad. So once you're done, come on over here and we'll have a seat in your row. <laughs> so I have a few other graduates.
Rebecca L. Bridwell. Isabel R. Brown. <laughs> Jacob Joshua Bryant. Skyla Mackenzie Berniski. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Dylan J. Keynes. Rachel Colt Califel. Thank you. Amanda Mia Canapa. Michael Aaron. Cordoff. <laughs> Sabrina Jean Dawson. <laughs> Olivia. Grace Dean. Megan Renee Danak. Congratulations. Skylar Rose Denny. <laughs> Jacob. Charles Dodge. <laughs> Sophia F. Dorsho. Charlotte Joan Dulette. Congratulations. Kieran L. Dowd. Dan George Dragasevich. Emma J. Chuba.
Tanner Jamison Finch. Brooke Madeline Flanders. Ashley Teresa Kuczynski. Jillian Nicole Kuczynski. Zoe Gail Gottschalk. Aiden Gray. Cambry Hamilton. <laughs> Malia Losa Ranieri Haynes. Aiden Hernandez. <laughs> Connor Joseph Higgins. Riley A. Isler. Yannique S. Johnson. <laughs> Alec J. Kirkendall. Carson Joseph Cocott. <laughs> K. 
Kennedy Lucille Cocott. Maya Autumn LeClaire. <laughs> Mary Rachel Lawrence. Joshua Abraham Levine. <laughs> An Lee. James R. LeClaire. <laughs> Shay E. Lemon. Bailey Brian Lenarzik. Thanks, you got it. Zachary T. Leno. Madeline Antoinette Leone. Genesis Louise Locke. Thank you. Kevin Liu. Madeline Maya Lustenberger. Allison Renee Lind. Ethan E. Michon.
Morgan C. Martineau. Benjamin Martino. Kyle Robert Maynard. Thank you so much. Macy Jade McGee. Kenneth David Moulton. Peter S. Newman. Lanesha Diamonique Yu. <laughs> Charles Henry Penza. Jackie Tran Fong. <laughs> Mackenzie Lynn Pion. Devin Patricia Prusak. <laughs> Hannah Joyce Ravish. Hannah Noel Richardson. <laughs> Sh 
Sean Joseph Richter. Macy Lee Ring. Elias R. Rivadonera Goodwin. Abigail L. Roberts. Aiden Henry Roach. Olivia E. Rosewarn. <laughs> Sophia Carlson Rossi. Ethan J. Michael Russell. Me too. <laughs> Oliver C. Sacri. Adriana Saravia. Thaddeus James Sargent. Eric Allen Scott. <laughs> Erica Segura Juarez. Megan and Self.
Kai Sharp. Olivia N. Simino. Amelia Rosemary Sobieski. Hi, Jimmy. Brandy Stetson. Sophia Grace Stilla. Andrew D. Tippett. Thank you. Thank you. George A. Taplin. Gates A. Tuttle. Savannah Hope Upton. Sierra Josephine Warren. Claire. Paige Winston. <laughs> Kaylee Lynn Wisman. Kevin Jasmine Woods. <laughs> Long Yao Shu. Benjamin Todd Zoli.
Students, I would like you to move your tassels from the right side of your mortarboard to the left. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2021. One last bit of housekeeping. Students, grab, take your seats for a second. What's that? I get it. Nope. Just so everybody knows, awards are available for pickup. The table in the back right. So if you're looking for your awards, they're back there. And the scholarships are back there as well. Once again, congratulations. Play us out. Thank you.